Hi, and a big welcome back to the channel today. Today's video has been requested so many times in the last few months that I've lost count. So the question was, Neil, will you make a video explaining, just like you did with the housing crash and other markets, exactly how and when the stock market will crash either in 2020 or 2021? So that's exactly what I'm going to deliver to you today, a step-by-step -step process of exactly how the stock market is and it, and it is going to crash very shortly. So the first thing before we get into the seven steps is most people ask me, Neil, what is the stock market? What is a share? Well, really simple. This is all you need to understand at this stage. A share is basically a percentage of that company's value. That's it. That's all you need to know right now. And the stock market is basically an accumulation of all of the companies within the stock market. So stage one then is unrealistic and rapid growth. Now, if you're a student of economic history like myself, you only need to look back at previous stock market crashes and you can see there tends to be this rapid growth, uh, which is usually unrealistic and not really connected to anything just before any crash. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing again. Now, a lot of people said back in, you know, earlier this year in spring that this was the big drop off that we'd had. And I said back then, no, that really wasn't it. That was just a blip. And I wasn't surprised at all when the stock market regained everything that it lost back in the springtime. Now, if we look at the 08 crisis, which a lot of people are comparing the current crisis we're into, I would say that's probably the wrong crash to look at and analyze. I really don't think that's correct. What a lot of economists are talking about and comparing it to. I think we're better off comparing it the most um, like for like recession is the 1929 Great Depression in the United States. Now, before you panic and think, wow, well, that was a 90% drop of the stock market. I'm not saying we're going to see a 90% drop. So I just want to clarify that now. I do think we are going to see a huge crash, a huge drop. But would it be 90%? I think that's quite doubtful. That's quite high. So you might be asking then, so why is the stock market going up? Why is it completely disconnected from the economy? where everything is going down except unemployment, which is going up. Surely the stock market should be crashing alongside all the smaller businesses as well. And the reason for that, I'm going to get into detail on it shortly, but a quick answer is that the reason that is not happening is because of stimulus. So all this stimulus that's being created, um, the monetary supply alone, just to put this into context here, the monetary supply has been increased by 30 percent. It's staggering, 30 percent just in the last year alone. So if you think how many decades it took to get the monetary supply to where it was last year, and then this year for all the stimulus creation to boost it by another 30 percent, it's absolutely insane. So all of this money is going into hard assets or, or the stock market or housing, you'll probably notice how the housing market is just booming right now because of all this extra money and stimulus. Now, let me come on to stage two then, because this is where low interest rates come in. When you have historically low interest rates, just like we have not just in the USA, but all over the world right now, this creates a bubble. And I'll explain why it creates a bubble. When you have easy credit and easy access to credit at almost 0%, there really isn't any risk for individuals or companies to take on debt. So what do they do? They ramp up their debt to the absolute maximum, not realizing that when we're in a recession or a crisis like this, there is only one way for things to go, and that is down. But at the same time, it means there's only one way for interest rates to go later on, which is up. So this just compounds the problem and makes it even worse. But the biggest problem that dwarfs all of this combined is something called share buybacks, which I'm absolutely staggered that this isn't all over the media, all over the news, and the other YouTubers aren't talking about this day and night. Share buybacks are the worst possible thing that could ever happen to a stock market. And for this very reason, they were made illegal up until 1982. And if you ask many economists what caused the 1929 Great Depression, they will say that the huge crash was caused 
by share buybacks. Now, if you don't know what these are, let me explain now. This is where a company borrows money. Well, it's really currency, but I'm just going to call it money for simplicity at historically low levels. They then take this money and do they invest in R&D, research and development? Do they invest it in uh, improvements to their efficiency? Do they try and bring costs down in the company? Do they try and incentivize employees or recruit or headhunt some of the best employees from other companies? No, they don't do any of that. What they do instead is they buy their own shares, which what this does, it inflates the value of the share. It's artificial. It's what I would call smoke and mirrors, like a magician would do. It's a trick. They inflate the share price of their own shares, thereby reducing the equities and making their company look much better, much well, you know, much better well run and much more profitable than it really is. If you're enjoying this video so far, please do me a quick favor. Just click the like button below. Really helps me out to actually get this video ranked on YouTube because some of my videos can be quite controversial and they don't always get ranked. So I really appreciate that. And why not subscribe to the channel while you're here? If you enjoy these videos, you like my common sense, logical approach to finance, subscribe to the channel and you'll get a video like this every week. So of course, when the average person and even some of the professionals as well, look at that company or look at the stock market as a whole, they say, wow, the stock market is rallying. It's really doing re fantastic right now. But if you apply common sense and logic here, obviously the stock market can't be doing well. How can the stock market, which remember is an accumulation of all those companies, how can it be booming and doing well? How can its value be going up? when the value of those companies is going down because they are losing profitability and many of them are taking historic losses in the billions of dollars. So how can the stock price be going up? Again, it's being artificially propped up. This is all fake. It's not real. And something like this can only go on for so long. You only have to look back in history at previous recessions and you'll see a repeat of things like this going on. And one thing that really annoys me, and it should annoy you as well, is that rather than these companies using this liquidity, their spare cash and saving it for a rainy day for a crisis like we're currently in. No, they do their share buybacks. And then what do they do? They ask the government for a bailout. That is absolutely disgraceful and scandalous. And worse than this, some of the stimulus money, some of the, the bailout money was actually used by these companies to do share buybacks. And now they have a cash uh, liquidity crisis. They want the government to bail them out. And remember what I always say in my videos, the government doesn't make money. The government only gets their money from taxing. So basically they're taxing you and I as citizens from our income. And then they're using this income to give it to bail out these big companies and the banks, just like 08, the banks and the big insurance companies were bailed out by taxpayers. So overall, these companies are in big trouble because like a bad gambler, they didn't know when to quit. They just kept going, kept going until a crisis has come. And now they have no way out except a bailout. So of course, if you haven't guessed by now, stage three is a huge bubble as a result of all of this stimulus, as a result of the practice of share buybacks, plus a whole host of other things which is going on in the stock market. Not least of which, and this is a really controversial subject, the Federal Reserve buying assets. Yes, you did just hear that correctly. The Federal Reserve is buying assets. And you might think, well, how can they do that? Is the Federal Reserve a government institution? No, it's not. It's a private institution. They create money out of thin air and then they loan it to the government, to commercial banks at an interest rate. So why is the Federal Reserve allowed to purchase all of these big assets and treasuries and bonds? And this is the crazy thing. And you can fact check this if you don't believe it. As of this week, the Federal Reserve, a private institution, owns over one third of all mortgages in the United States. So that means that one in every three of you watching this right now, the Federal Reserve owns your mortgage. Stage four then is when the crisis comes about. 
And it doesn't matter how the financial crisis comes about. In the 2008 crisis, this was a mortgage-based crisis uh, brought on by subprime loans, also ARMs, adjustable rate mortgages, known as variable rate mortgages in other countries. When the initial rate ended, a lot of people couldn't uh, pay the mortgage anymore at a higher rate and they defaulted on their mortgages and the whole house of cards just collapsed upon itself. If you haven't watched that video yet, it's on my channel. I tell it's probably the best video I've ever produced so far. And it really goes into detail and explains how the next housing crash will happen. It's got just under 2 million views on that video. So I would highly recommend you watch that. So the main problem with stage four is that all spending either stops or just dramatically slows down. And when that happens, it takes us on to stage five, which is the start of the recessionary cycle. The recessionary cycle begins with uncertainty. Uh, when you have uncertainty in the marketplace, you have uncertainty everywhere. Spending slows down, which of course then affects businesses. And then when that happens to businesses, they start to make layoffs like we've seen in this crisis. And in fact, the layoffs in this crisis are much higher than any other financial crisis, recession or depression that we have ever seen so far. And of course, when that happens, it just kicks GDP off a cliff, which we have already seen. Just look at this graph here and you can see why GDP fell off a cliff, because 70 percent of GDP comes from consumer spending. And how can consumers spend when they don't have jobs, when they've been laid off or if they're just uncertain? What tends to happen in human nature is that people tend to start paying down debt and saving more. That's why you've seen the rate of savings going up in the United States, because people are uncertain. They've started saving money. Now, of course, this isn't everyone. This is the people who can afford to save money. On the other side, you have people who are already poor, who are getting into even more debt because where they were poor before, now they have no job, they have no way of paying their mortgage or their, their rent and other things that they would normally spend money on. So of course, this, if you just look at some of the videos that are on YouTube of malls, shopping centers, even just look at this clip of Oxford Street in London. Now, Oxford Street is normally absolutely booming. You cannot walk down the street at this time of the year. You are just bumping into people nonstop. But look, it is completely empty. This is just insane. And another example I can give you is that just last week I went to a theme park and on a nice day like this, this theme park is usually full. Just think about Disneyland and other places. They are full. But actually, I would estimate that it was only at about 5% capacity. At most, I would say 10% capacity and half the rides and half of the restaurants were closed down. And if we just look at retail on the high street, just look at the statistics from Yelp that are coming out. They are absolutely scary. And even if you look at the amount of restaurant and retail closures, they're estimating that around half of these will never open again. They will never reopen. What does this do? It means that anyone who is employed by these small businesses, which regardless of what the media and people tell you is not accurate, actually it's not the big businesses that make up the most employment. It is the small businesses and medium sized businesses which make up the vast amount of employees. So when these people are losing their jobs and you watching this may have lost your job or you probably know someone who's either furloughed or has lost their job, it means that people can't spend money anymore. So GDP simply drops. And when GDP drops, that means that these companies, these big uh, companies in the stock market are losing money. So how can it be possible that they are going up in their share value? It can't. Or should I say it can't for very long? Now, one thing to bear in mind, if you look at previous recessions and depressions, the stock market can be up to six months behind the general economy. Now, this isn't always the case when it comes to individual share prices of certain companies. But when you look at the stock market as a whole, it can take up to six months. For example, it isn't true that the stock market is booming across all the companies. If you look at what's booming, it tends to be the top companies within the stock market. But if you look at all the other uh, companies, many of those are down quite heavily. Well, you may be asking then as we come to the end of stage five, well, why isn't the stock market crashing? So let's talk about stage six. 
Stage six is the Federal Reserve buying assets and creating stimulus. Or as it's better known, quantitative easing. They prefer the term large scale asset purchases. But this is what is holding up the stock market right now is all of this new stimulus money creation, which is basically just inflating the price of everything. And you can see it in housing as well. It's going to housing, it's going to stocks and shares and other assets. And this is one of the reasons that I say that cash that isn't invested, it's just sat in the bank, is not always a good idea. Yes, it's good to have some cash available for when there are crashes and crises so that you have money for a rainy day or so that you can purchase assets that have come down in price. But then the downside of this is when the Federal Reserve is creating all this new money, it actually depreciates the money already in existence. And you only have to look at the inflation calculator of the US dollar going back 100 years to see what the dollar was worth then compared to what it's worth now. And we haven't even seen the inflation yet. The inflation out of all of this will come later and it's going to be huge. Some of you are probably already noticing it in certain items or even in food, but you're gonna see this in a lot of things coming up very soon. Stage seven then, this is the final stage, the final step in the crash process. And this is where the crash actually occurs. So if we look at GDP and when that started to reduce, and then when it started to crash, I would say that we're looking at anywhere from a six month period onwards from April 2020. So from April 2020 through to now, we are just coming into October. So I would say that any time from now onwards, we're going to start to see the stock market coming down. Now, however, let me add a caveat to that. If the Federal Reserve continues this stimulus creation, they do another round of stimulus, they start doing bailouts and all sorts of other things, then this is just going to kick the can down the road and this could drag on for a little while longer. However, some people are saying this is just going to keep going on and on and on because of the stimulus. That is not accurate and that will not happen. It will 100% crash at some point. And the reason for that is the Fed doesn't have enough money. It can't create enough money in order to stave this off forever. Now, you might say, well, can't the Fed just keep printing and printing? And that's true. They can print into infinity, but they won't. And the reason for that is if they keep printing into infinity, it will create hyperinflation, just like we saw in Venezuela and Hungary and Zimbabwe and all these other countries that have had this problem. So that won't happen. So eventually they will have to let the markets crash. So the housing market will crash, the stock market will crash. And if you remember my prediction video from a while back where I said there would be a second wave, there's no doubt about it, it will happen around the end of the year in flu season. Well, surprise, surprise, we're already starting to see this happen now. The UK just this week has announced another lockdown which could last as long as six months. Now, if the USA follows suit and announces similar lockdowns, this, ladies and gentlemen, is it. This is the nail in the coffin for the economy. It simply cannot carry on uh, in this way. It, it, it just it, it breaks all the rules of finance and economics for it to just keep booming, for the housing market, for the stock market to keep booming in this way. They will come down. And I know people think I'm crazy for saying this uh, and I get a lot of criticism on it, but this is just common sense. Just look back over history and you will see what I'm saying here to be true. So if you're in any kind of financial predicament right now, i.e. you are an investor, you buy stocks and shares, you're in the market, you have a pension, your, your pensions invest in the market, you don't really understand a lot about finance, but you want to learn more, I will post a link below, which is a link to our private investment forum. It's a community. Some of the people in there are absolute geniuses, been investing for decades, and it's a very, very nice, friendly forum. Uh, I'll post a link below. So you have to go through Patreon. Uh, tier one will get you into that forum where you can learn all of this, learn more about finance. I'm very active there as well every day. So that is the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and clicked the like button. Please do that uh, favor for me. Really appreciate it. And why not subscribe? Uh, I'll bring you a video like this every week. But until next week, thank you so much. God bless.